Counterattack Podcast with myself, Daps. What's going on, peeps? Here again with another video for you guys. Last time I put out a video, look, I said a couple of weeks ago that I was going to do a month of videos. And then I went away. So forgive me for that. And since last week, I've not done one. But we're back on it. I had a little roll where I did one every day. We're going to we're gonna move again. We're going to move again. So, but you know what? I'm going to stop talking about it. So obviously, Rob, Robbie, I think he was actually our first guest of the year which is crazy, but um, got another one next week, we're gonna get that one done, and um, yeah man, we're back man, so guys, hit the like, um, like and subscribe button, make sure guys, if you like, even if you don't want to subscribe, I hope you want to subscribe, and I hope you hit that button, at least click the like, because that does wonders for my algorithms, and it takes nothing, so just a like, and comment, you know, big up the guys out who, I, who have been engaging with me and everything, so yeah man, um, so, guys, as I'm recording this, it's Monday evening and Tottenham have just been held 1-1 at Goodison Park. And I was watching that match just thinking, oh, my gosh, Tottenham are so bad. Tottenham are awful. And do you know what? I'm not going to get into the intricacies of you know tactics and all of that. All I will say is that once Tottenham went down to 10 men, I just... I just... I couldn't believe what I saw and um, I think it was Alan Smith commentating and he was saying himself that, you know, it's as if Tottenham had the player um, centre because they just sat back and invited Everton onto them and and it's interesting because Conte's gone but it's still the same old Tottenham and, and I don't understand why against a team that's in relegation battle you would just sit back. But to be honest, even before that, they weren't great. So to have the man up and... Um, have that advantage, you'd expect them to go and kick on. So they obviously get their penalty. It was a penalty all day long, cool. But Everton just came back into it. We're pressing, we're pressing. Silly mistakes from like, playing out the back. I don't know if it's complacency, concentration, concentration, or what, it, or I don't know, because Everton were getting chances. Lloris had to make, I think they they said in the 15, 20 minutes, after, no, in 15 minutes um, after Tottenham went up, um, Everton had had four shots on target, which is like, and Tottenham had none. Um, Everton had 84% possession um, in the, in, within a 10-minute spell after the sending off or after the goal, whichever one it was, and it was bad. Like, And right now, if I, if I go and look at the table right now, guys, let me, let me quickly look at the Premier League table because I'm not understanding... Well, to be honest, I didn't know how close how close it was, if I'm being totally honest. So, look, Tottenham right now are fourth. Fourth right now, equal on points with United and um, Newcastle. But obviously, United they played two more games than United and Newcastle. So, I didn't realise it was that close. And for Tottenham to still be in a chance with um, top four and to blow it like they did, and to blow those two points, knowing that they played two more games than United... It was just, yeah, it, it was just bad. But if I just focus on Everton for a second, I could, I think that Everton are actually going to stay up. And for the first time since Sean Dash has come in, I've actually looked at Everton and been like, do you know what? They're going to stay up. They're going to stay up. And um, I just, I just think that, you know, the fact that they're able to pick up points and, you know, Everton in earlier on in the season, going one nil down, against um, Tottenham, they would have, I think, folded and it would have gone on to be two, three, four, but they're picking up points and, you know, players like Iwobi are, are, are playing well and and um, Decore, since since Dash has come in, to be fair, he's, I know he got sent off today, but he's, he's playing really well and and um, I think he'll keep them up and I think there's a question over, you know, if he does keep them up and obviously he's looking to just stay up first, but once they stayed up, I think real questions have to be asked about Dominic Calvert-Lewin as well because he's just never available. And I don't know what injury he's got now, but he just seems to just not be available, not be injury-free. And it's been like that for a while. I think it's like his second season of just straight injuries and and they could have done with him. And um, yeah, I, I think they need to really figure out what they're, gonna, what they're going to do about that situation. If they're going to sell him, see how much money they can get, but they probably won't get much for him. I, I don't know, or try and just get someone else in, but they've been trying to get a striker in for, for ages. So I think I think they've done well. He's got 
in in Tarkovsky and even Michael Keane and and Dwight McNeil, he's just got players who are ready to, to just be, you know, direct and um, compact and resolute. Do you get what I'm saying? And and you know, Sean Dash, you know, if there's one thing about him, he's gonna be direct. So it's it's a bit. It's, it was. It's a bit interesting, and I'm gonna come off come off this one. It's a bit interesting seeing how he likes to play, but you know, in regards to going out wide and putting it into the box, but they can't do that. So they do everything up until that point, and then when it comes now to time to put it into the box, they can't do it because they don't have that focal point. And when Ellis um, Sim, Sims came on, you could see that there was a bit more um, a bit more crosses going into the box, and because he's he's obviously got the size and whatnot, he held it up well as well, but. Um, yeah, that's that's just something to look at. But Everton did well. I felt like they deserved um, the point. I felt like they even deserved the win. To be honest, I didn't think Tottenham were great at all, and um, I think it's literally just gonna be. It, my heart is telling me, no, my heart, my head is telling me that they will not qualify for for Champions League. But equally, no. Oh, would they qualify? The only ones I'm th- I'm thinking of that they might. You know what? In saying that, United. I didn't realize it was that close. It was that tight up there. I mean, down there because obviously Arsenal up top down there. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, right now United are out of it, but obviously they've got the two games in hand. And to be honest, I don't know which way it could go because Newcastle they look like they're they're back and and playing well and picking up points again, but. They could easily fall off. They could easily just not um, play well on the day and and go through three, four games drawing and stuff like that. Um, United will will get back to picking up points. I'm not even even worried about that one. But Tottenham, honestly, I I can't see Tottenham playing well. I I feel like Tottenham getting points is dependent on... I feel like Tottenham getting points is dependent on other teams, you know, not not playing well against them as opposed to them just playing well and, and I think at this point of the season with them not playing well it's going to be tough for them especially because they play two more games and they're level on points with Newcastle and um, Newcastle and and United so do you know what I think United w- will get it but a lot of it will depend on Newcastle and Newcastle's form going into the back end of the season but yeah Tottenham um, done Harry Kane got his 18th goal of the season which to be honest, in a season that's been poor for Tottenham, he's done, he's done well, and everyone knows how I feel about Harry Kane. I feel like he's a top top striker. I don't feel like he's world class, but you have to just give him his props because to be in a team that's failing like Tottenham time and time again, and to bag him, I mean to be bagging at the rate in which he is doing, you just have to give him his credit. And I know it was a penalty, but last week it was a header. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's getting the goals. So so big up Harry Kane. Hurry up and leave them and go buy Munich because I can't have you scoring goals for Man United. So um yeah. So that's that. And obviously the other big news was that oh, there's two two managers got sacked. And um we're gonna we're gonna start with, with Graham Potter first. And and I feel like with Graham Potter, it was always coming. I said a couple games ago that had he not, if he didn't pick up points against, this is before the international break, if things didn't change, and then then he was going to get the sack. It's come one game after the international break, and and I'm not surprised to be totally honest because in this world, in this in this time that we're in, managers don't get the time, and you know even though you gave him all of these players, and you know there's been no time for them to settle in, even though he took over you know, halfway through the season or whenever he took over. Like, there's no time. He hasn't had, he hasn't really had time and I would have liked Chelsea to have at least given him till the end of the season. But I think what's forced their hand is the slipping into the bottom half of the table. I think they, they could manage, you know, they could, they could almost put up with, you know, fifth or sixth, even though they wanted Champions League, I think, because of how, you know, how they were performing when he took over. But, I think slipping into the bottom half of the table was just the final straw. And I don't know who Chelsea get in next. I think it's going to, it's it's an interesting one because Todd Bowley has this thing about, and I, and I might be wrong, he has this thing about him where he 
he's just on making the decisions. He's just on, you know, being the main man. And I think for him now, so what, since he's coming, he's fired two managers. Tuchel was especially one, was one that was especially early, I thought, but he's just so, so quick with it. Um, you know, he's buying all these players. He's he's flying in for negotiations and it'll be interesting to see the manager that comes in and, and wants to work under those circumstances. And I know there was a manager that was linked to Chelsea who was thinking of turning it. I've forgotten who it was now because of, you know, the overall dynamics of the club and, you know, the culture of the club in terms of them sacking managers and whatnot. So it'll just be interesting to see how, to see what goes on there and, you know, Chelsea might not have any European football next year. And if that's the case, if I'm being totally honest, you know, it might be better for them in regards to challenging for the Premier League because they're not going to have any games when they're going to have, I mean, they're not going to have, you know, the the heavy schedule, heavy fixtures um, schedule. And on top of that, they've got a team good enough to challenge. So, and they're probably going to buy again in the summer. So them not being involved in European competitions might actually be, a good thing for them in regards to challenging for the for the Premier League and um yeah but obviously they lost and credit to Aston Villa Aston Villa were on to them Aston Villa were absolutely on to them and I want to shout out Oli Watkins and people will say oh that's you're saying this because Oli Watkins been on your podcast and blah 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 but honestly if we're if we're being totally honest like He's playing out of his skin. I think this is probably the best form he's probably been in since he's been at Aston Villa. And not to say he's not been in good form before, but I think what's what's different about this time is the fact that, for me anyway, yes, there's been times where he's gone on goal streets and whatever, but his influence on a, like within the game right now on a, consi- in a, on a consistent basis is is what tips it for me. And yes, even in away games where you know it's going to be tough, you know your backs are against the wall, he's still keeping that same energy. And I think he scored in his fifth straight away game or something like that. And you just have to give him the credit. And and it's funny because I even said to him that, um, should I even say this? I haven't said to him that he should have um, been in the England squad, but we go again. And his, his response was one, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it's, it's something like, oh, um, don't worry, we're going to try harder. Um, so he, he's just got that mentality where it's just head down. It's not a woe is me mentality. And he's someone that just works hard. He works hard for the team. He works hard for himself. And and he's getting his um, he's getting his his credit now and and rightfully so. So big up Ollie Watkins. So um, let me know what you guys think about you know the the sacking. Was it early? Was it um, was it was it premature? Who do you think Chelsea are going to get in um, now? I know there's a lot of talk on, is it Nagelsmann? Is that his, how you pronounce his name? There's a lot of talk about him. I don't know. Which, which managers are currently available right now? You know, I'm hearing talk about Brendan Rodgers to even go there. And, and on that Brendan, Brendan Rodgers thing. But yeah, so yeah, there's talk that Brendan Rodgers should go there. And, and even with the whole Brendan Rodgers talk, Obviously, he's got sacked. He's been sacked. But to be honest, Simon Jordan said something on TalkSport, and I echo it, where I feel like Brendan Rodgers probably walked and had had enough, as opposed to him getting the sack, because we all know that they did not want to sack him, or they couldn't sack him, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the compensation that was due to him, the fact that they know he has not been properly backed. Um, But yeah, I, I feel like... He's probably looking at the situation and just thinking, do you know what, I've tried as much as I can try, but this is it's too much. There's too much going on here. There's too much I have to, you know, contend with. And he's probably just thought, do you know what, let's cut ties. And and what I don't like is that his tenure at Leicester, people have made people almost look at him as, as if to say, Ugh, you're not a good manager anymore. Do you know what I mean? And I don't, I don't really like that because Brendan Rodgers is a very, very good manager. And, and I still think if he was to, you know, if he was to go to Chelsea, I think he'll do a good job where, where he's at a team where they're, they're backed and, you know, he's got the players, he gets the players that he wants and he gets real players of quality to carry out the duties that he needs. Because we've seen that when he has the players 
that he wants at his at his disposal. He's a very, very, very good manager. And his team play very, very well. So what I don't want is for Leicester, I mean, yeah, for his, his time at Leicester to cloud people's judgment on, on Brendan Rodgers. Because I still think he will do a very, very good job at a top team. And, you know, whether or not he's he's ready for the big four teams right now, I don't know. But if he was to go, I don't think he would be out of his depth. I, I don't think that um, he would do any worse than previous managers that are that are in that um that are in that are at those teams so you know credit to Brendan Rodgers obviously he's gone now and again I I honestly do believe it was more of him having enough rather than Leicester saying no you're sacked because yeah he's probably looked at that team and thought I've done as much as I can do here nothing is changing he wasn't really backed in Jan you know to make those changes and um yeah so now he's gone but guys let me know what you think about Leicester now are Leicester going to go down? Because if I look at this table again, Leicester are currently second from bottom, 10 games left, and they're two points from safety. It's so tight down there. So Leicester leads Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest. Oh my gosh, all the way up to Wolves. No, yeah, all the way up to Wolves, let's say. So from 13th to 19th, there's five points in it which is crazy. Leicester at 25 points are two points of safety from Bournemouth. It's mad because I don't know why I just always thought, I would. I don't really look at the bottom of the table, but I just always think that Bournemouth are in there, but they're actually out of the relegation zone right now, which is, which is interesting. I think Bournemouth will go down and then it's just a case of, you know, who's, because Southampton look like they're going to go down as well. Uh... I've got a feeling that Nottingham Forest will go down. I've I've got I've got a sneaky feeling about that. So um yeah. But yeah, guys let me know what you think. Who's who's going down in in um you know what, yeah. Guys, you lot let me know right now, yeah, in the comments or tweet me or whatever. Who do you guys think is going down or are going down? Which teams do you think are going down? So I'm gonna say Southampton Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth are going down. And um, yeah, that's my guess. But you guys just let me know what you think. All right, what else have we got on the agenda? Right. So, yeah, the last thing I'm actually going to talk about is obviously Manchester City beating Liverpool. And and it's, it's so funny, yeah. You see... Right, so I mentioned it against. Um, I mentioned it in my podcast with Robbie that it's so funny now how there are so many like everyone's against Arsenal. So my group chats when Manchester City beat Liverpool, all the Liverpool fans had smoke for Arsenal, which I've never seen in my life. Everyone knows the rules of the group chat are like when your team are losing, you cannot come with any sort of smoke because focus. Focus on your team losing. But in my group chat, it was about somehow about Arsenal. Oh, when we see you next week or, you know, you guys have to do... Listen, none of that. None of that talk because you're, you're losing. But yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because City obviously beat Liverpool and and Liverpool were just so bad on, on, on the day. I think once they got 1-0 up, I was thinking, oh. But then, obviously, they got their goal back in, you know, in the first half. But then once they got that early second it was just so bad what i will say oh my gosh i'm so happy i've got a podcast listen i was tweeting during the game yeah i was tweeting during the game about john stones you see john stones yeah and it's annoying that i did not record straight after the game or i did not do a watch along because now it just seems like i'm saying it because you know there's been a few people saying it now but john stones was bubbling against Liverpool he did not look out of place at all and there's a clip that's even going around of of John Stones where he comes he gets involved you know little couple around the corners one twos you know roaming around he's getting forward he's oh my gosh there's one he sprayed a pass out John Stones and you know I, I saw I saw a tweet about about him that when do we have when do we start having that conversation about John Stones and to be totally honest, I've always been a big fan of John Stones. And it's true, you know, I don't know why people don't really put him in that category of, of 
you know, the Premier League defenders, like top defenders, because, but do you know what? I, I think it's because he has spent a lot of time, not a lot of time, but there's been some time where he's been out of position. He's played on the right. He's gone to the centre. He's, um, he's been out of the team for like more than like half a season at one point. And um, I think that's probably why we don't look at Stones as the, one of the best centre-backs because he's won. He's won, you know, Premier League after Premier League after Premier League. He's, he's played pivotal parts in, in, in the league. And and away from all of that stuff, individually, he's a, a solid player. Um, so that's that's an interesting one. I'm not really completely sure why that is the case, but apart from the reasons I mentioned, I don't know why people don't really talk about Stones, but it'll be it's an interesting thing. Like, you guys let me know like why people don't put John Stones in that conversation. I'm going to I'm going to try and find um but you know what? I'm going to try and find a tweet where that said that. But you know what? Let me let me look through it very quickly because I remember who tweeted it. And this person doesn't really tweet much. Well, I don't think they do anyway. Um So it was yeah. So genuinely when we genuinely when do we place him in the this is John Stones we're talking about. Genuinely when do we place him in the GOAT competition? Oh, blah, let me read. Genuinely, when do we place him in the GOAT centre back discussion? Physically he can do everything um Virgil van Dijk can do. His trophy cabinet eclipses Ramos and Terry when he wants and when he wants he can play as a pet midfielder. Absolute freak. So to be honest, that whole trophy one I'm not really, you know, gonna gonna dive into that one because he's got the trophies but really and truly even though I did say as well that it shouldn't be about the trophies I think what it is is longevity I think if he does another two seasons playing at this level doing the things he's doing I think people would definitely notice him and put him up there so I, I, I basically think that's what it is like I know with John Stones as much as we all know he's a good player I think the reason why he's not in certain competition um, certain conversations is because you know when you look at the Virgils, who they compared them to in, in that tweet, Virgil was, was a massive part of Liverpool winning the league, a massive part of Liverpool winning the Champions League, not just a cog, not just a bit part player, whereas whereas John Stones, he's a massive part of Man City right now, but there's been times where he, they've won it, but they probably would have won it without him anyway. Do you get what I'm saying? Which is unfair to say, I know, but I don't know. That's, 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 my, that's my thoughts, but I think... If City were to win the um, the Champions League this year, and um, you know they went on and won another Premier League, I think in years to come we will talk about John Stones like that because he is one of the best defenders around right now, and and I'm just loving I was just loving the way he was bubbling in that centre midfield, like absolute baller, absolute baller. Um, oh yeah, on Liverpool as well. You see Robertson. I don't know, but Robertson needs to fix up a bit. And I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give this to him now because Okay, cool. So that's checking the time. Yeah, Robertson needs to fix up and I'm gonna say this now because a lot a lot of the time I highlight Trent. Trent rightfully so gets, you know, a lot of critics, but against Man City there was twice where he's tried to dive in and, and just win like the pass and a Man City player has you know, just just got there in time and knocked it past him, and it's left the entire defense open for them for Man City to attack. And the second time it happened, it led to it led to the goal, the first goal that that they scored, and and he's been doing that a lot, and he's not really been up to his usual standards. And the thing about Robertson is that for me was that Robertson always was just consistent and gave you consistently, you know, you're getting a seven, even an eight, consistently from him whereas right now he's dropped off to the point where he's not as consistent I'm not going to say he's finished because that's not me you know me already I'm not going to say that but I do definitely think he needs to buck up his ideas and and just somehow but and I know it's hard I know it's hard because he's playing in a team where there are so many players not playing well and confidence is probably low so me highlighting this is is probably a bit unfair but I'm highlighting it just because it is just so clear how um, how how much he's kind of been off it recently, but I do think you know Robertson is still there. But in all the years of seeing Robertson for Liverpool, 
this is probably the first time we've ever seen anything like this. So I wouldn't be too alarmed for the for the long for, like for the long term. But um, he definitely needs to buck up his ideas. So yeah, City City won, which meant that Arsenal had to had to follow up and and you know there's a bit of pressure on them to win their game against Leeds and. If I'm being totally honest, watching that game in the first half, we were just not at it at all. Leeds had some really, really good chances. Somerville looked lively. Um, and we just we just weren't really fluid. And and it took a moment of, you know, trickery from Gabriel Jesus to win that penalty. And from the moment we got that penalty and won it, we looked like we would go on and win it. But you know what? If I talk about Gabby Jesus, I think, you know, a lot has been said about, um, you know, the fact that he's not a prolific striker and whatever. But what we have missed for the last couple months where he's been injured is the ability that he has to just make something out of nothing. Like, when he got the ball, you would, you just knew something's going to happen. It may be either a shot or whatever. But he wins that penalty just like, just like that. And we needed that in that moment. And... You know, he then gets his second goal, which is the sort of goal I want to see him scoring more when he just gets in a box and 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 you know and gets the gets his tappings. But I just want to highlight as well and talk about Leandro Leandro Trossard and I don't know if I've spoken about him, but what a signing he's been. I think since he signed for Arsenal he's got seven assists, which is a joke. Which is a joke in, in, in such a short space of time. So he's been such a such a good buy and you know, it was maybe it was maybe a a good thing that Saka got to have a little bit of rest so that we he could he could you know continue um, playing because I think Gabby Jesus comes in and who do you who like I don't know because you can't leave out Trossard right now I don't think because he's playing that well that um, and getting assist but then you can't leave out Martinelli Saka plays so do you just continue to you know persist with Trossard or now that Gabby Hayes is getting back to hundred percent, do you go with him? So, um, it's a it's a in, it's an interesting dynamic, and and um, if I'm being totally honest, looking forward to Liverpool. I think if Arsenal get something from Liverpool, then they go on to win the league. But Anfield, yeah, oh, I absolutely hate that ground. And it's not even about Liverpool because if we were playing Liverpool again at Emirates, we'd win. If we were playing them neutral, we'd win. Or I'd, I'd, I'd be confident that that we won, that we would win. But something about Liverpool is just—I mean, something about Anfield. There's something about Anfield where you just don't. It can it can really swallow you up, and you know the 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 form that we've seen Arsenal in, I've seen so many times where we've been in good form, we go to Anfield and that ground just swallows you up and the crowd get on your back and then you don't even recognise your team anymore. And Gary Neville said something. Um, he said that Alex Ferguson would say that um, when, they, when they're when they in a title running, if you win at Anfield, you'd win the league. Do you know what I mean? And, and I feel that way now. I feel like if Arsenal go to Anfield and get anything from there, and if, like, if we win, I think we're going to go and win the league because I think the gap is just would just be too much, too big to 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 close. But if we can, yeah, if we can go on and and um, beat them, and then you know that game against City. It's funny though because that game against City, a lot of people are looking at it as a write off game. Do you get know what I'm saying? Like we're going to lose, so we need to make sure that we're still in it by that point because if we lose to City, then it's probably going to be that we lost the thing because people can't see City losing and and right now as a fan I'm feeling the pressure I can't lie to you because our running is is a tough one it's a tough one but again I think if we can beat Liverpool and if we can go to City and just not lose then I think the the, the title the title will be Arsenal's and and um yeah so against Leeds 4-1 I was happy with that result and you know what? Another thing I'm I'm happy with when it comes to Arsenal is the fact that no matter what, when when teams score against us, we always look like we can come back and score. Do you know what I mean? We went we like they scored, even though it was already three 0 at the time that that they scored. I just knew that we're gonna come back and score again. So 
I, I think that's something that's really been added to Arsenal and um yeah, it's just it's just good to see, man. But yeah, guys, before I go, quick one on United. I think United are looking really bad right now. I think without Rashford's goals, so it's like it's too it's too reliant on Rashford. And if Rashford ain't scoring his goal, then you know, like do you know what I'm saying? If Rashford ain't scoring his goal, then where's the goal gonna come from? You know, it's not gonna come from, not a lot of goals coming from midfield. Um Vekos isn't getting your goal. Um Martial is Martial. I'm not even gonna say anything about Martial because Martial's the most frustrating player. And I'll tell you why he's frustrating, because we all know he's got the ability. We all know he's got the talent. But at what point do we look at him and just say, this is Martial? At what point do we look at Martial and be like, you're not going to be a 20-goal a season striker. You're probably not even going to be a 15-goal um, a season striker. So like, I feel like we've seen the best of Martial. And that's not to say that he's a bad player, I'm honestly, but... Martial can't be what you go to war with. That's what I'm basically saying. He can't be what you want to go and win a league with as your main man. No, he can't. He's not reliable. And at the end of the day, I think you want someone that is reliable. Harry Kane is reliable. Haaland, he's reliable. These are strikers. I know I'm naming the, the top ones, but Ivan Tony, reliable. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, and and these are the guys that, you know, you you want to be going into games with knowing that okay, our striker is we've we've got him in our team, so there's a chance here. Whereas Martial, I don't look at Martial. I don't think people look at Martial and think, oh, we've got him. He's starting the game. There's a chance that you know he's he's gonna win us the game. No, I think you look for him to have good contribution. I hope that he has a good game, but there's not that expectation that he's gonna fire you to win the league. So um, yeah, I, I think I don't think he should go or anything, but I just think that United need need better, and I got a feeling they're gonna get Kane. I really don't want them to, but I got a feeling they're gonna go in and get Kane. But yeah, guys, that's that's it for me. And um, make sure you press that like button. Make sure you, if you haven't gone back and looked at the one I had with Arsenal Fan TV last week, make sure you go back and do that. But um, yeah, man, you guys, let me know what you think of this um, video. Or this pod, this episode. In a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah.